Greetings folks and thanks for tuning in and I hope you're all fit and well out there in the collecting cosmos. Uh, something a bit different today, a change in format. Rather than the usual box, accessories, figure, showcase routine, I thought we'd try something new, uh, something a little bit different. And you know what they say, a change is as good as a rest and all that. So instead, we're going to do box, figure and accessories all in one go. Uh, let me know what you think of the format. Uh, do you prefer this format? Do you prefer the older format? Uh, I'd be interested to hear. So drop a comment in the comment section below. Uh, and... Uh, as always, please drop a like on the video. Uh, it helps folks find the channel. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. So, today we're gonna to be taking a step back in time. Uh, not only with the figure, which is about seven, eight years old, uh, but with the subject matter. It's Star Trek, the original series, uh, which first aired in the States the year I was born. Yes, I am that old. Uh, but moving swiftly on before everyone does the maths, <laughs> we're gonna uh, take a, a look at the, uh, uh, at the QMX quarter scale take on Leonard Bones McCoy, AKA, AKA D Forrest Kelly. Uh, we will start with a quick look at this box. Now collectors of QMX uh, figures will recognize this box from the Star Trek series. What you've got on the back here um, is this uh, grid effect, which is actually an, an overhead shot of the saucer section of uh, the Enterprise. It says USS Enterprise there, NCC 1701. QMX Master Series in the middle, Leonard Bones McCoy, 1-6 scale articulated figure, and Star Trek, the original series, with uh, 50 in there, I'm, I'm assuming, to, uh, uh, for the 50-year anniversary in the, uh, in the Starfleet emblem itself. On the side, Leonard Bones McCoy, QMX uh, Master Series again. On this side, says Star Trek, uh, the original series, that, uh, that 50 years thing again. On the back, really nice photograph of the... Uh, uh, of, the, of the figure itself. Nice HD shot of, uh, of Bones there with his hypo. Uh, and it's a slipcover design. You pop the slipcover off. Uh, obviously, figures underneath there through this uh, windowed uh, section here on the side. A repetition of that, uh, uh, what we saw on the uh, on the slipcover and around the back. Uh, another great photo of the, uh, of, of the medic himself, the doctor himself in the medical bay. So yeah, that's the box. Uh, I'll say at this point, this is not a new figure to me. Had this in a collection a while, uh, a long while, in fact. Uh, so uh, it's not brand new, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the box out the way. So accessories. Um, we'll start with the hands, you know, me and my hands. Now you get a total of 10 hands, five pairs of hands. So there's a lot to go out here, which is nice to see. We'll grab a couple at random. Most of them are gripping hands. You get one open palm pair and... Uh, that's the uh, the open palm one, and then the rest are, are either fisted hands or gripping hands. We'll get one into uh, in close up so we can have a look at uh, the details here. Now, got to remember this is a seven year old figure, uh, but uh, even you know even taking that into consideration, these hands are pretty good. There's bone structure in there. There's vein work. Uh, you can, the knuckles are a, a, a slightly different shade. Yeah, there's, there's creasing in the palms. Not a vast amount, but there's some there, and the fingernails have been picked out. Uh, I would say the paint application may be a tad high gloss, maybe not quite up to today's standards, but as I say, for a seven-year-old figure, uh, I, I think, uh, and obviously sculpting and paintings come on in leaps and bounds in seven years, so, but for seven years old, very good indeed, and a huge array of them, which is nice to see. All kinds of holding hands, and as I said, fisted hands and stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, a lot of hands to go out there. Uh, well made, well painted, well sculpted, so we'll pop those to one side. Uh, set of instructions now, you, regulars to the channel will know, will know about me and instructions. Uh, on the whole, I have a tendency to uh, put them to one side and do that man thing and steam in regardless. Uh, and this is no exception here, seven year old figure, and the instructions are still sealed. But I'm assuming this, uh, uh, these cover how to uh, pose the figure and how to uh, deal with the accessories because there's a lot of magnets involved here, but we'll get to that. So yeah, those are your accessories. Uh, talking of accessories, so let's have a, a quick look at them. We'll stop him spinning as well because at this box we need to see how these accessories work with the figure. Obviously, you've got the, uh, he's holding the hypo there. He's got the, uh, the medical tricorder uh, and the phaser. We'll take a look at those. But you also get uh, this medical pack. Now, um, this pack is, I believe, is made out of pleather. Um, and uh, considering, considering how old it is, I'll get it in close here. It's Velcro fastened at the top. Uh, and considering its age, this is, uh, this, this is actually holding up really, really well. 
um, it velcros open, folds three ways, uh, and it's designed to hold uh, a number of the other accessories. I believe you can put the hypo in there. Uh, you can actually put in the uh, the medical scanner itself. We'll take a look at that, a close look at that in a minute. Uh, and uh, you can fit these these vials in, which we'll also take a look at as well. Uh, the vials slot in here. I believe the hypo slots in there and the, uh, uh, the the medical scanner itself slots in there. I don't use this because one, it's a hell of a squeeze getting all that stuff in there. Once you've got it all in there, it's quite bulky, which means the magnet struggles to hold it. And obviously this is pleather. So the more stress and pressure you put on it, the more likely it is to, uh, to deform and fall apart over time. So yeah, I've never used it, but uh, once you, if you do decide to use it, load all your bits and pieces up there. It's relatively straightforward. They just slot in, and there's a magnet on the back there. Now, if I can find the sweet spot, I can show you on the figure. I'll bring him a little bit closer in. And there's a spot somewhere around there. And he said confidently. Nearly found it. And this is one of the, I won't say it's an issue, but this is one of the, uh, uh, the head scratches with this one is the magnets. Uh, but yeah, found it first time. So it'll pop straight on there and come off. Uh, uh, when you wanted to swap it out so yeah that's the uh that's the medical pouch as i mentioned before you get these vials now i've never taken these out of the plastic bag um you get these multicolored uh, vials of liquid which slot into that uh, into that pack now never taking these out you can have him holding them as well but i'm never taking these out simply because as viewers to the channel will know i have sausage fingers and uh, uh, they will disappear very very quickly so still in the bag uh, also fair to note at this point as well um, he does come with a communicator uh, once again that is uh, uh, magnetically attached it attaches I believe and now I think there is another magnet somewhere around this area yeah, I can feel it there there's a, there's, there's a magnet around the back here for where his communicator goes unfortunately about five minutes before I was due to shoot this uh, 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 this particular review, um, I, I, I brought Mr. Mr. McCoy out of the detail. His communicator fell off, much to the am amusement of my cat, who thought it was a toy, who decided to play with it, who sent it spinning off underneath the detail with one bat of his paw. Uh, and now I can't retrieve it. But uh, So you have to take my word for it. There is a very accurate, well-painted and detailed all-plastic replica of the, uh, of the communicator, which has a flip top and magnetically attaches to the back of the... Uh, uh, a back of uh, bones himself and I will be retrieving that after we've wrapped this, uh, wrapped this review up. But yeah, what else do you get? As I mentioned before, yeah, there's the, uh, uh, the scanner section uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the medical tricorder and uh, that's rather nicely done. Clear plastic at the top, uh, black and silver there and uh, once again, that can, you can hold that in, in his hand as well if you want to. What else do you get? You get a belt. Now, you get this sort of sash belt. Now, this uh, this belt, I believe, was only worn in the first season of Star Trek, but it's Velcro fastening. Uh, and once again, you can put this around. Once again, it's not something I, I display on the figure. Uh, I, I like him in the uh, in, in in this particular with this particular look. But you can use this if you want to. And if you're wanting to attach the accessories, you can see on the back here. This, this is where the magnets are. Now, you, once, you, once you actually get this open, you realize what kind of magnets you're dealing with. They are super thin, yeah. So, uh, and they're, they're not massive. So finding the sweet spot to get the accessories on uh, is, uh, can, can be interesting. But yeah, you've got one there for the communicator and one there down the front for the phaser, which is, and it's meant to be worn at a sort of a jaunty angle like that. So you'd have uh, a phaser there and, uh, communicator around the back but as I said not something I use but it's uh, nicely made um, it's sort of got this suede feel to it sort of uh, faux suede and it's got this rather nice gold piping around the edges which is screen accurate the colors are on point as well uh, and as I said velcro fastens around the back of the figure uh, if you're wanting to use it so yeah that's the uh, the sash and um, finally you get this now once again I haven't taken this out <laughs> simply because of my sausage fingers and my cat uh, but uh, yeah what you've got here is a gold pinky ring um, now you can, you can actually pop that onto the hand itself and um, let's see I'm, I'm going to try and open this up actually for the this <laughs> for the first time in seven years uh, but yeah let's uh, let's unfold this so we can although we're looking through plastic yeah it's just a a, a plain gold I'll try and get that in shot plain gold 
ring and designed to go on. I think it's he, Leonard um, uh, actually De Forest Kelly wore it on his uh, on the pinky uh, pinky finger of his left hand. A uh, bit of history behind this uh, this particular ring. Apparently, it was uh, it belonged to his uncle who fought in the First World War, and his uncle gave it to uh, his mother, and his mother then uh, and then he received it on his mother's death and wore it uh, all the time. Never took it off. I had it on for the rest of his life. Uh, but yeah, that's the history behind the ring, and uh, yeah, I'm keeping that in the bag so I don't lose it. So uh, that's the ring. Um, let's take a look at the accessories that we've got on the figure. We'll get him. Uh, let's just lift this camera up and get uh, and get him front and center, and bring him in a little bit so we can uh, see the other accessories. So what else do you get? You get this uh, hypo spray. Uh, one piece of sculpted plastic, very nicely done, very screen accurate, just a, a simple coat of silver paint on there, uh, but the detailing is nice and the uh, and the screen accuracy is on, is on point there. So yeah, that's the Hypo Spray. He also comes with the obligatory phaser. Now this is magnetically attached as well, and I'm going to say at this point, yeah, magnets are a nightmare on this thing, they really are. <clears throat> It's, they're difficult to find the sweet spot and they're not the strongest in the world. I mean, they do hold when you when you find it. Uh, this phaser is, is, is pretty good, but uh, uh, the communicator and, and the medical pouch can be a bit of a headache. Uh, you have to futz around for a while to find, uh, say, to find that sweet spot. But this phaser, let's have a quick look. All one piece of sculpted plastic, nicely done, screen accurate, on point for uh, uh, the 66 TV show. Uh, paint applications are the right colour. It's got that sort of deep blue uh, in the body there, uh, slightly uh, darker, blacker handle, and then you've got the silver uh, um, silver highlights there uh, on the end there and around the back there. And also the uh, the smaller phaser actually detaches from the larger phaser. This is the little a little sort of hook thing going on there where it slots out. Uh, and this has a magnet on it too, so you can put this around the back as well. I'm not even going to attempt to find the sweet spot for this magnet on the back because this piece is so small, if it falls off, it bounces off and you're never going to see it again. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can mag magnetically attach this piece separately. As you can see, there's a, if it, the camera will focus, there's a magnet on the back. So yeah, that simply slots in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, just nice sculpt, nice paint applications, really, really well done. And uh, let's see if I can find that that spot again and this is there you go yeah found it second third time there so yeah that's the phaser you also get the uh, medical tricorder we'll just uh, lift his arm off here so uh, we can uh, can take a closer look at this and get it off uh, play the strap on here uh, the same as the uh, uh, the uh, what what medical vial holder thingy i'm going to call it the medical pack let's call it that but yeah play the strap on here uh sculpted plastic uh, medical tricorder screen accurate as far as i can tell uh paint applications relatively straightforward you've just got these silver uh, highlights picked out there uh, and the top does flip open uh, and uh, if you pop it open like that what you've got inside doesn't come too far. I, I would say be careful here. Don't force this uh, because it, it 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 can be tough, but it will pop all the way open uh, if you're gentle with it. What you've got inside there is just really nicely done. Is uh, they've uh, they picked out the buttons there, and there's the little uh, there's a little sort of uh, gold grill, and then obviously the screen as well. So yeah, nice to see that nice little touch on the uh, on the tricorder there, and that will fasten. But as I say, it can be a little bit stiff. This. It, you have to be really careful with this one, uh, not to uh, not to damage it. But yeah, that's the that's the tricorder that he comes with as well. So we'll pop that to one side. So let's figure time. Let's take a look at uh, at the man himself. Uh, we'll do what we always do. We'll start at the bottom, work our way up. Oh yeah, let's uh, let's just take a quick look at this base uh, before we uh, dive in. Uh, nice base here. The QMX bases I do like. Um, the uh, I mean it's slightly different to the uh, the X06 ones that we're seeing today, but yeah, you've got the uh, once again you've got the Starfleet emblem in the middle with this circle around it, just in this nice sort of gold uh, effect paint. Standard issue crotch grabber which slots in the top. Underneath uh, you've got some feet on there which is good to see. It says Star Trek the original series 50 50 years QMX and Dr Leonard Burns McCoy. So yeah, simple, effective, 
uh, hollow plastic, but uh, just bold, simple, and, and really, really nice. So we'll pop that back on the uh, on the turntable and get Bones in himself for a close-up look. Now, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up, as we always do. Um, now, uh, boots, yeah, exceptionally screen accurate, these boots, straight away, made out of what feels like pleather. Uh, the stitch work is really, really nice. Um, no split cut boot design obviously here, so not a vast amount of forward and backward movement in that foot, but this, uh, there's a certain amount of lateral movement. I would say, obviously, exercise caution, uh, pleather boots are not going to stand the test of time very well if you're going for a dramatic pose. Uh, so I'd keep it, I'd keep this one as, uh, as vanilla as possible, but yeah, the, the, uh, they go up to just about where the, just below the knee, which is uh, like halfway up, I would say, three quarters of the way up uh, the shin which is once again is screen accurate. Uh, materials used here. Now, um, I've got to say the materials are absolutely on point. They really are. Um, I, I believe uh, Nanjin Tam, who now heads up uh, X06, uh, originally worked for QMX, uh, and it sort of shows um, the, 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 it's that, uh, that, uh, that, that eye for detail and that eye for replicating the right materials. But the, uh, the pants themselves, uh, obviously they're short, uh, come to, down to just below them, about halfway down below the knee. Uh, they've got those turnips. Uh, the material used here is really, really nice, and it's got that shine to it, but not too shiny, which is uh, what, uh, but uh, just shiny enough that we associate with the original series. Stitch works really, really nice. Uh, the, these uh, the, these seams around the back are screen accurate. Uh, there's a zip here at the back. I'm not sure why you'd want to unzip it, but it's there if you want to. Um, and uh, let's check the articulation. I'm going to be super careful with this because it's uh, because it's, I would say it's an, a really old figure, but it's it's got some years on it. But yeah, just a simple um, knee joint there. About the maximum you're going to get there is about 45 degrees. I don't want to over over tax this figure because of its age. Uh, um, there is. Uh, there's no butterfly. Well, I say butterfly. There's no. It feels like there's a ball joint there in the uh, in the top of the leg, but there's not a vast amount of give there. Uh, I would. Uh, yeah, there's some, but uh, you're not going to be going for super dynamic poses with this figure anyway. So uh, the, the articulation is good enough. There's a twist at the waist there. Uh, the arms themselves. I've got a. You've got up to about, oh, it will go further than 45 degrees. The arms will go right the way up. That's good to see. So there's a double bend there at the uh, at the elbow. Bring that arm back down. Uh, oh, and there's a butterfly joint at the shoulder as well. So there's plenty of movement, uh, forward and backward and lateral movement in the arms there. So the articulation is very good. Moving up to this shirt. Now, uh, they really have got the, tone, the, 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 uh, the right shade of blue here. I know that sounds... Like I might be being a bit pedantic, but it's one of those things where um, the outfit itself really comes down to this shirt. The shirt, and obviously the pants, but the shirt, getting that, that tone right, that, that, that shade of blue right is vital. And I think QMX have absolutely nailed it here. And I think the quality of the material as well, too, uh, that it reflects that. Uh, once again, it's, it's got that shine to it, but not overly shiny that you'll see in the original series. Uh, the Starfleet emblem uh, at, uh, on the chest there is really, really well done. You've got that gold, uh, and it, it's not it's not stuck on. Well, I think it, I think it's actually possibly. I'm, I'm getting really, really close in here. Possibly stuck on. Maybe not sure quite how that's attached, but it's really nice to know whether it's woven actually into the material of the shirt or whether it's actually stuck on. Probably stuck on, but uh, yeah, uh, really nicely done. You've got that uh, em the, the center part of the emblems accurate as well. You've got that gold uh, material there, uh, even down to the piping on the uh, uh, on the cuffs here. Now, I would say if you've got this figure, exercise caution because it, it, I, as you can probably see there, one of these is just coming off a little bit, and I need to reattach it there because I think these are plastic that's actually been uh, uh, they are i'm pretty certain this this uh, this piping is plastic that's been stuck to the figure itself and this one here is in real danger of uh, of coming off uh, and that's probably an age thing but i need to give that some uh, some tlc after uh, after this review so yeah that's the piping that's the shirt the collar's really well done the stitching is uh, is absolutely accurate and on point and um, let's uh, take a look at this head sculpt. Now, what I'm going to do is just move this camera back ever so slightly so I can drop him down in front of the camera so we can get a 
close-up look at this head sculpt now straight away i'm going to say for a seven year old head sculpt i think this is really really good absolutely on point likeness of uh, of uh, de forest kelly as mccoy um the, the the skin texturing as well the paint applications uh are really really good is it 100 percent? that's a question i always ask when i'm doing these uh, these videos is it 100 percent? not quite uh, and it, and uh, having mentioned nanjim tan before it'd be interesting to see uh uh xo6's take on uh, the star trek the motion picture and bakoi uh, which is uh, has gone up for pre-order and i've got that coming so i i'll i'll, I'll put these two up against each other just to see uh, see how they compare but uh, i think it's still a very very good head sculpt perhaps not a hundred percent but uh, 95 percent most certainly You've got the, uh, the, the the skin texturing in the neck and on the face, uh, even down to the blemishes on the face, um, the uh, the bags under the eyes, the creasing in the face, the eyebrows. The eyes are really, really nice and glassy in the right shade. Uh, that one eyebrow slightly higher than the other, which we come to associate with bones. Um, that slightly darker shading uh, between the eyebrow and the eye. On, on, on the eyelid itself yeah really really well done and i think uh, for a seven year old figure this is standing up very very well indeed has done well the uh, the style is right uh, you, you picked out the individual strands there the colors right even down to the shape of the sideburns uh just really really great head sculpt for its age uh fixed neck head sculpt but it's got a good range of range of motion there so uh, yeah you can uh, you can really go to town with the posing here you can, about the maximum it'll go forward is to about there the maximum it'll go backwards is about there and, but you've got a full spin as well so you can have him looking off in all manner of different directions so yeah a really really good head sculpt for its age um i still think it stands up today i think it's absolutely on point so uh yeah there you have it that's leonard bones mccoy from star trek the uh, original tv series so let's get him back on the stand get him spinning again and going for final thoughts on this guy before we jump into the showcase uh right where to begin uh i as I, I've, I've said it several times in this video and at the risk of uh, sounding like a broken record i think uh, i think this if if i'd have received this uh, figure seven years ago i would have instantaneously given it a 10 out of 10. um maybe bearing in mind where we are today with head sculpts and paint applications i'm probably going to give this a 9.5 10 on a good day how can you have a 10 on a good day that uh, I'm, I'm going with a 9.5 because i think the paint applications could be better that but that's judging it by today's standards oh and oh. I, I try not to judge things judge things by where we are now and price points now um i think when when, we, when when i'm scoring a figure i like to put price and i like to put age to one side but it's it's difficult here let's let's pretend it's seven years ago and i've just unboxed this figure i'm giving it a 10. <laughs> that settles it uh, but we'll stick with that we'll stick with a 10. uh but uh, with with the benefit of hindsight i think this uh, this piece has really really stood the test of time very very well indeed and i think i can yeah, this is where i start to see echoes of Nanjin Tam here that I can see his touch here I can see his influence uh, particularly in that head sculpt and in the clothing but uh, yeah so there you have it that is uh, QMX's take on Leonard Bones McCoy from the original Star Trek series so what's your take on this uh, on this particular piece have you got QMX figures in your collection are you a Star Trek fan um, Drop a comment in the comment section below. Nothing's off menu. Um, comment about Star Trek. Comment about the channel. Comment about the uh, the format of the uh, the review. Comment about the figure. Anything at all, please. Don't feel free to drop it into the comment section. Uh, and I suppose all that remains for me to say uh, is a massive thank you for watching. What's coming up on the channel? Um, <clears throat> I am not going to go into too much detail, but suffice it to say. We have quarter scale statues coming up on the channel. We have a Rathmore six scale figures from Caustic Plastic, Hot Toys, Susu Toys, Premier Toys, Present Toys, 
Uh, we've got a couple of major grails coming in in the not too distant future, one old, one new. Um, we have got more previews, we have got more showcases, uh, and of course we've got an awful lot more of that, uh, that, that, that little uh, occasional series that we're doing where I torture myself for your, your pleasure. Don't make me choose where I have to take a couple of my favourite figures, pop them in the ring together, let them beat seven bells out of each other and pick a winner and, lo and uh, get rid of the loser. And trust me, it's painful um, and not as easy as it sounds. But uh, yeah, and, and uh, so there'll be loads more episodes of that coming up on the channel. So stay tuned for that. So yeah, as I said before, all it remains for me to say is a huge thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. Uh, happy collecting and it's over to the showcase.